This episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast is brought to you by LEAD Rose Global Institute, powered by L'Oreal USA Professional Products Division. Listen, a license gets you behind the chair, a degree lets you lead. Introducing a global industry transformation, the first ever higher education degree pathway designed for the beauty professional. The $500 billion beauty industry is reinventing itself and it demands more leaders with entrepreneurial spirit and experience than ever before. Lead Rose Global Institute is a game-changing pathway to higher education for the life you deserve. Lead's flexible accelerated degree pathway enables every beauty professional to obtain a college degree and university degree, even with a full-time job and life schedule. Earn your associate's degree in just two semesters and your bachelor's degree in four from the comfort of your home in record time. You'll learn the business of beauty and acquire invaluable knowledge, enabling you to become a beauty professional of the future, capable of creating financial prosperity, success, and happiness. Transformational leadership development, innovation, the science of inner management, These are just a peek into the -the state-of-the-art education you will receive that takes you into the future of beauty. Visit leadinstitute.degree for more information. That is leadinstitute.degree because lead is the future of beauty and the future starts today. Let's go ahead and jump into the episode. So I, I investigated this industry. I traveled throughout the United States. I went to schools. I went to salons. I talked to beauty professionals. And I have to tell you that I became really disappointed and sad because I saw so many women, particularly men too, a kind heart, a smart, wanting to do better for their life, really loving what they do. But a ton of people highly unsuccessful in terms of their finances, in terms of their own happiness, joy, personal life, their place in the society, their prestige, uh, their value, just so much I saw missing. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this is a big industry, right? Multi-billion dollar industry, right? And how can it be that its workforce is where it is? Welcome to the Friends in Beauty podcast a safe space for ambitious beauty industry creatives to have real talk, get real answers, and practical tools to grow their businesses. My name is Aquia Robinson, and I'm a makeup artist, beauty educator, and the creator of Friends in Beauty. I created Friends in Beauty to support like-minded creatives, just like you, on their quest to connect, network, and build genuine relationships within the beauty community. Join me every week as me and my special guests reveal the keys to success and longevity in the beauty industry, and most importantly, have fun while doing it. You ready? Hey, what's up? It's your best friend in beauty, Aquia Robinson. Welcome back to another episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast. I am so happy to have you here. And I hope you're listening to this episode in high spirits and in good health. Now, on this episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast, I welcome Francis Tesmer to the Friends in Beauty guest chair. Francis is the founder and CEO of LEAD Rolfs Global Institute, powered by L'Oreal USA Professional Products Division. She utilizes her global credibility as a German economic senator advocating for equality, education, social justice, and economic growth to transform the beauty industry. Frances believes with over 8 million beauty professionals around the world, most of whom are women, the time has come to provide next level education to this population and empower them with knowledge that can influence millions of humans in a positive and transformative way. I had such a wonderful time chatting with Frances. She has so much energy, and you can really feel how passionate she is about helping beauty professionals elevate their careers. In this interview, Frances shares what motivated her to create LEAD, the first ever higher education pathway for beauty professionals, 
the advocacy process for gaining support from local colleges to offer these programs, what kind of classes are offered and how the curriculum was thoughtfully planned, the type of careers that beauty pros can pursue after receiving their associate's and bachelor's degrees, how she's working to change the narrative on how careers in beauty are perceived, advice on dealing with negative feedback from friends and family, all about the first graduating class and how they're celebrating and so much more. Friends in Beauty, you're really going to enjoy this conversation because I know that I did. Frances has a vision and to have someone advocating for beauty pros the way that she is, is truly admirable. Let's go ahead and jump into this conversation with Frances. And if you prefer to watch our beautiful faces, then tune in on YouTube. Enjoy. Welcome to the Friends and Beauty Podcast, Frances. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you here. You came in showering me with compliments. So that's always a good time. It's a good time already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have every reason to shower you with compliment because I see compliment everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just love her already. You can stay as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get jumping, you know, straight into the interview, I want to start off with some icebreaker questions just to get us warmed up so the Friends of Beauty audience could get to know you outside of what you're doing for our industry, like great work. So the first one, just give us three random facts about you. Oh, three random facts about me. Mm -hmm. I am passionate about women empowerment through education. I'm passionate about women becoming more financially uh, or to experience financial freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's extremely important to me. Humanity is very important to me. And beauty, finding its real, um, how would I say, I call it intelligent beauty bringing intelligent beauty to the world and telling everybody, hello, beauty matters. And beauty is important. It's very close to my heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. What do people always tell you that you're good at aside from what you're doing professionally? Uh, they think I'm good at saying things the way they are, mm -hmm. just saying it the way they are. Mm -hmm. uh, People tell me that it shows that I'm passionate about what I do. Uh, and people tell me that I am real, I guess. Yeah, that's a great compliment. <laughs> yes, especially in the world that we're in now, where so many yeah. facades and, you know, just different personalities that you had to portray for like social media, real life, oh, business God. life. That's, that's an yeah. awesome compliment. Yeah, that's very kind. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. So I have these random deck of cards called pod decks, and they have very interesting questions inside of them, sometimes crazy. This is a would you rather and a what the heck. Which one would you like? <laughs> okay, let's go with what the heck. <laughs> She's going for it. She's adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's give. Oh, this is a cute one. If humans came with a warning label, what would yours say? Okay, I need to understand the question again. Say, tell me the question again. Yeah. If, if humans came with a warning label, you know, if something says, do not touch, this is hot, this is whatever. Oh, okay. Like, what would your warn warning label be if you had a warning label? Yeah, I would say to the human, the warning label would be, if I don't evolve... Ooh. and become better human, we might have a big challenge on planet Earth. I like that. Yes. I like that. Okay. If you can give a piece of advice to 30-year-old Frances, what would you tell her? 30-year-old Frances, I would say, honestly, evolve faster. Mm. evolve faster we have short time on this planet earth all we have is some time and some energy right so put it towards your involvement right because you as one person matter and what happens to you 
is going to matter in your family, in your community, in the country, in the world. Mm -hmm. I think each one of us, if we just try to work on ourselves mm -hmm. and become better, and imagine if each one of us did that, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say that. I would say spend more time to grow yourself so that you are more useful in the world, in the service of others. I really believe that. Okay. I like that advice. Yeah. I hope y'all got that. I, I like that advice a lot. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time that you did something for the first time? The last time I did something for the first time. Oh my God. I've done so many things for the first time. Uh, the last time I did something for the first time, I have to think about that. Well, mm -hmm. for the very first time, actually, I participated in person in a huge gala that was all about homelessness in America. Mm -hmm. And I was able to hear firsthand what this is all about. And what's happening, and that is another thing that I'm very passionate about, yeah. a solution for homelessness. Mm -hmm. you know? Is there um, a lot of homelessness in Europe? You know, we don't have the issue to the extent and in the way you have it in America. Okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's very different and it's not as big as you have it here mm. and it's growing and it's growing faster and it's becoming bigger. And, and I personally don't understand that we live in the richest country in the world. Why we don't have a concrete solution for mm. such a big challenge. Yeah. It it amazes me. It makes no sense. Makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last one, if you weren't the founder of Lead Rolf's Global Institute, what else could you see yourself doing right now? Or right now in this moment? Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, in this moment, actually, I'm engaged in a major global project <laughs> that that it's designed by me for women to lead it worldwide. And in order to bring the world together mm -hmm. in a powerful way so that we finally come to our senses that we are all one and that all of us matter. And the only way we can move our planet forward is when we work together, we acknowledge each other, we respect each other, we treat each other as we all deserve to be treated. Absolutely. And I, I honestly believe we live in an era uh, that women to, need to be a lot more engaged than ever before. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the that's a project right now, and I am uh, uh, heavily engaged in. I've been working on it for twenty years, mm -hmm. and we're about to launch it this year. Wow! Congratulations! Thank you. Congratulations! Wow. I'm happy for all of us. It's it's a project that belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see it. Yes. That's exciting. That is very exciting. So when you go to networking events or just industry events, conferences, anything like that, when people ask you, who are you? What do you do? Like, how do you introduce yourself? You know, I'm a global entrepreneur, you know, um, I've been uh, engaged in global um, economy, uh, global business, and and as well as humanitarian uh, projects. Okay. But my official title, I'm an economic senator from the Senate of Germany, Europe, and international. And, okay. uh, and we fight for uh, justice worldwide, education worldwide, um, women worldwide, 
uh, and things of that nature. That's what we do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, big time. <laughs> it's such an honor to be able to sit down with you. Like, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. No, it's a big honor to be together with you. And I don't think, I, I am sure I am talking to somebody very intelligent and very beautiful. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about our time together. Thank you. Thank you. So what was, so you just gave us your background, but what was your relationship with beauty or the beauty industry in general, just before founding Leeds? Oh, before founding Leeds, as a, as a, as a person, my, my uh, relationship with beauty or, or in general? Yep. Your relationship and your personal relationship with beauty or the industry before the school. Before, you know, I didn't have any relationship with the industry at all. Mm -hmm. I was just a customer, you know, who went to a salon, got her hair done, got her makeup done, always had great relationship mm -hmm. uh, with beauty professionals. They were always very kind to me. I always appreciated the work that they do. And even as a customer, which is not normal because everybody has come to believe, oh, this is so easy, you know. Even as a customer, I realized that this is, this is a lot of work. You know, you need a lot of uh, training and education and focus. And there's just so much that you need to know to mm -hmm. do this right. So I always appreciate it. Uh, beauty professional, I relied on them. My life relied on them. You know, uh, I was going out in the world to talk, to travel, to perform, to whatever. And I needed these beauty professionals to give me the look, the feeling, the confidence, the power to show up in the world. So I was appreciated beauty professional and realized that this is this is a this this takes a lot i didn't take it for granted but that was it i had no relationship or connection to the beauty industry none none yeah yeah so as the founder now of lead this is the first ever higher education program for beauty industry professionals which is like truly impressive powered by l'oreal as a consumer or a client, what kind of conversations were you hearing behind the scenes that led you to want to create a school for, you know, beauty professionals? Right. Oh my God. Where do I even start? Uh, I investigated this industry. Uh, I was very interested because most of the people in this space are women, over 80% of them worldwide. And we're talking about 8 million population. Mm -hmm. So I, I investigated this industry. I traveled throughout the United States. I went to schools. I went to salons. I talked to beauty professionals. And I have to tell you that I became really disappointed and sad mm -hmm. because I saw so many women, particularly men too, uh, kind heart, smart, wanting to do better for their life, really loving what they do. But a ton of people highly unsuccessful mm -hmm. in terms of their finances, in terms of their own happiness, joy, personal life, their place in the society, their prestige, uh, their value, just so much I saw missing. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this is a big industry, right? Multi-billion dollar industry, right? Yeah. And how can it be that its workforce is where it is? Mm -hmm. So it was disappointing, I, I have to tell you. Yeah. I was sad. Yeah. Yeah. Cause as creators, we, we always struggle with that. It's, it's always a struggle between like what we're passionate about and what makes us feel good, like providing those services for people versus the money or the, the financial gain that's attached to it is not that great. 
as as it compares to other industries i i would believe well you know i am i have a different opinion i think that it doesn't need to be this or that mm -hmm. right you love beauty you're creative my god that's fantastic but then you need to be given the platform to learn everything you need to learn so that you can utilize your creativity and your love for other people and your love for transformation mm -hmm. that you can utilize that in a way that serves the people that you love and you want to transfer and serves you too we don't have to have a winner or a loser this can be win-win everybody can win mm -hmm. so i personally don't blame the beautician to be in this space. I actually don't blame anybody in a way you could say. I'm just saying that we need to open our eyes. This We are today in the most transformed world that we've ever been. Technology has just, boom, you know, transformed everything. Yeah. The today's human are different their needs are different their wants are different we're just in a different space collectively as human race and and so many other industries have transformed themselves to match what is needed today whether it's product whether it's science whatever it is and i think beauty professionals as humans and as most of them are women you and i know that and men too they're kind of left behind, mm -hmm. right? Right, and and so I feel that the society, the education, all of us need to hug them, bring them in, and say, okay, what do we need to give you so that you too can make good money, be successful, be joyful, you know, be respected. All of that is that's what it is. That's that's how I see it. Yeah, and education is the first step in that because I know a lot of cos well not you know most cosmetology schools do not teach any side of business, any side of financial literacy, any side of like how to operate a business once you leave there. It's it's just all skill and absolutely technique and everything. So education is definitely the first step in empowering um, beauty industry professionals to realize that they can have higher ex expectations higher aspirations for themselves aside from just working um in a salon or providing a service absolutely i totally agree after all we're talking about beauty right yes. <laughs> so beauty right and beautician first need to embody beauty right mm. so beauty is joy beauty is compassion beauty is having a good life Beauty being able to send your kids to the best of school. Beauty is having to pay for your home. Beauty is living a good life, right? Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't a beauty professional have that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about. I agree with you. Education is at the center of it all, right? Yeah. If we don't know, we don't know. Somebody yeah. has to give it to us, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know exactly. what was the initial process like when you had the idea to do this was it a hard um task to kind of get people on board to see the vision that you had and like what was the process to you know launch it honestly I would say one of the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with in my life and I've done a lot of major projects worldwide i've dealt with politicians <laughs> you know i've dealt with business people all of it and why because it was kind of you needed to deal with so many area let me start with beauty professionals beauty professional themselves had come to believe this is it mm -hmm. right they have accepted their own situation to be, you talk about finance and they've accepted, well, you know, since I love beauty and I want to be a makeup artist or a hairdresser or whatever, you know, well, I'm not, I'm just not going to make much money, for yeah. example, or, you know, I'm not going to have a important position in the society. Yeah. 
or I'm not allowed to dream big, or I'm not allowed to, you know, all of that. So they had already accepted that. So to come and tell them, wait a minute, let me tell you something. So that right there was a challenge. Then the academia, when I first reached out to universities and colleges and academias and professors, you know, many of them, not all, but many says, what? Like beautician need to go to college and you, to, and, and you can't blame them because the world look at beautician like kind of like secondhand citizen in some ways, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? In some ways you could say that. And, and so, so, so now you have to deal with that. Then you have the legality of it, right? That then engages politician, right? Uh, there's, the, there's that space. Yeah. Uh, and then there is even the client, like, like what? Like, you know, so all of it, the entire space has been left behind, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a lot to deal with, a lot of people to convince, and a, and, and a lot of advocacy, right? And uh, so uh, challenging, but I loved every point of it, right? Mm -hmm. I loved it. And, and in some way, you know, I am glad that I got crazy about this because you kind of had to be crazy to spend all this time and all this money and all this advocate to get to where we are today. But I tell you one thing, beauty professional deserve that kind of love and attention. Mm -hmm. Women particularly deserve that kind of love and attention that now this program is bringing to them. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what beauty professionals are gonna do with this and what kind of future they're gonna create. And, and we are seeing it already. It's so exciting. Yes, it is it's very exciting. When I heard about this, I was like, dang, I wish this was available when I was um considering college. I went to college and I got an IT degree that I never uh -huh. used, but I wish that this was around at the time because I would have totally enrolled in one of these um one of these programs. So like after receiving their associates um at you know Mesa Community College or going to Arizona State University for the bachelors, what kind of career paths are students expected to pursue outside of being behind the chair or you know providing services? Absolutely. So two things I want to say to your point, you said, oh, I wish it was available. We hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Where was this 10 years ago? Where was this 20 years ago? Yeah. And I want to speak to that. And I, I bet you, you know many people like that. We see a lot of beautician that love beauty, love this. And then because they didn't have an opportunity to go and study in college and university the way we have it now, they left the industry altogether. They went, they did something else, right? But they're not happy doing something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, and, and sometimes 10 years later, they come back to the beauty space and they're going and they're coming and all of that. But coming back to this, one of the things that I'm extremely excited for beauty professional is, is the fact that the college and university degree pathway program now opens many possibilities to beauty professional. Mm -hmm. You can go and become an entrepreneur, open your own salon, do your own thing, because now you have all the tools and you can do it successfully and proudly, and you can be successful and you can bring other people that join you and are successful and give what I call beauty experience of the future to the client of today. Yeah. Then, you could go you could go and become a manager of a corporation of a salon of a manufacturer you can become a marketing manager you can go work in a laboratory you can become a scientist you can continue there is like so many 
possibility mm -hmm. open for you today that it was never before. To your point, everybody thought, well, when I get out of the cosmetology, all I can do is become a beautician, maybe a hairdresser, makeup artist. Nothing wrong with it. That by itself, if you do it well, is a fantastic career, right? But now in addition to that, you can do all these other things which wasn't available uh, to us in this way ever before. Yeah. And then the prestige matters, you know, prestige, the acknowledgement that this is a profession for God's sake. This is not a trade. This is a profession, right? Yeah. It's important, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think because a lot of people still don't realize everything that can be done within the beauty industry. They don't realize when they're watching a commercial, when they're watching a movie, somebody had to do their makeup, somebody had to do their hair. Um, there's so many other avenues, product development and all types of things that people could do within the beauty industry. But I think because um, I guess consumers only see one angle of it. They don't, they, when you say you want to be a makeup artist, a hairstylist or anything in the beauty industry, they like, Okay, so how you go pay your bills? Because that you gonna do what? You gonna do hair? So absolutely, I agree with you. Fully. So much that could be done. Absolutely, and and it, yeah, I I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah, what kind of classes are offered, and how did you all determine what you wanted to include in the curriculum to kind of guide people on certain paths? Oh my God, I'm so glad you asked that because it took years of discussion. Mm -hmm. We sat around the table again and again with professor, with academia specialists, with curriculum specialists, looking at thousands of different areas of study to find out what serves this population the best? For example, one of the things we have in our degree program as one of the first thing people get is personal finance. You know that better than I do. How many beauticians, because they don't know how to deal with their own finances, that even when they make money, they don't have money because yeah. they don't know how to deal with that money, how to invest that money, et cetera, et cetera. That's just like one of them. Mindfulness at the highest level, right? Mm -hmm. How to manage your internal joy and happiness and peace, extremely important. You can't serve beauty if you're not beauty yourself. You yeah. gotta embody because we know, you know better than I do, beauty is not just our lipstick, right? We all need to look our best, of course, right? That goes without saying, but what about the rest? We all know if we don't feel good, if we have some mental things, some nutritional, whatever going on in our life, you can put as much lipstick on somebody's lip, they're right. still not going to look good, right? right? You can't separate inner and outer beauty. So they have that. They have marketing. They have social media. They have management. They have business leadership. Hello. Finally. I love that. I tell you what. My biggest focus is to create leaders mm. in this industry. Yeah. Women and men. Again, over 80% of this industry are women. I want women leader in beauty because you know why? We need them. The mm -hmm. world needs you. The world needs leaders in beauty more than ever before. We mm -hmm. need them. We can show up in the world if a beautician is not interacting with me in a kind, intelligent compassionate way yes they know how to beautify my outside but their interaction with me is gonna have an impact on me every time a little bit more a little bit more and since i'm going to my beautician for years right imagine imagine what that beautician can do for me i honestly believe that beautician are 
through this program, through this leadership that we're talking about, are being positioned to be at the forefront of everything that is beautiful, at the forefront of humanity itself. Mm -hmm. We need it today more than any other time. There's nobody better positioned to do that than beautician. But we got to bring them up and they deserve it. You know, they definitely do. They deserve the platform. They deserve all of the glory that comes with it. Do you yes. recommend that people, since the program is still pretty new, so for like the next generation coming in, would you recommend that people do trade school or cosmetology school first and then the degree, do the degree, cosmetology, or kind of do them at the same you know, time? You have several possibilities. Number one, you can do cosmetology and start taking some courses at the same time. You can, you can do that. Uh, you can finish your cosmetology and, and then go for the degree. That's, there's, there's many different ways possible. But honestly, what I'm working on right now is that also those people in the future who want to go straight to college and university, but yet they want to learn the technical piece that they can, by apprenticing in beauty spaces, learn that. So oh. we're looking at many different possibilities. The, the idea is to give to everyone choices. So mm -hmm. they can do whatever it is that fits their life. Again, not limit them. Whatever it is that works for you, what we want at the end of the day, that you're educated, you make great money, you make great impact, you're happy, you are a role model for humanity. You are beauty, right? Yeah. You represent beauty at its best. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I have a, a never have I ever question for you. I don't know if you ever played that game. It's, it's traditionally a drinking game. So like if you've oh. done something before, you have to take a shot, but we're not taking shots, of course. <laughs> I have a question for you. If, it's, if it has happened before, you can share the story. But if this happens to like one of your students at your university, um, how would you instruct them to handle the situation? So the question is, never have I By ever. By the way, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> no That's shock. Why so <laughs> <laughs> That's why you look so flawless. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Come on. Thank you. You Thank are you. gorgeous and you know it, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, so, never have I ever had someone try to discourage me, like friends or family, because of the, the background that you have. Never have I ever had a friend or family member discourage me from pursuing lead. Did you have anything like that happen to you when you told your friends oh, discouraged me? Oh, my family have discouraged me. They, 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 they have discouraged me to the moon. Ah. A lot of people discourage me. They say, why are you spending your time, your money to do this? This is too difficult, too complicated. It takes too much time, too much money, too much challenges. Why do you want to do that? And the reason they tell me that because by coincidence, I've been blessed. I've been successful in my life. I have a lot of other work, right? And so say, why are you doing this? Yes, they have. And I tell you, the more they have discouraged me, the more I became passionate about doing it. So yes, yes I have had that. Yes. Wow. Wow. What advice would you give to um, someone who wants to enroll and lead? They're very passionate about it, but their friends and family are in their ear. Like, don't like, why do you want to pursue a degree like that? Like, why not just go to college and get, be a lawyer, be a doctor or something like that? Uh, you're asking me how they should handle it. Yeah. What advice would you give them to yeah. talk to them? Mm. You know, here's what I would say. Education is what we all need in whichever area we like to pursue. If you're educated, you win, right? If you're educated, you have many different possibilities. You, you are empowered to create the future you want. The reason parents discourage beautician or why are you doing that, you can't blame the parents because until now, 
most people in this space have not been highly successful. We have many very successful people like yourself, but in this space, it's been 22 to $25,000 income yearly average, I'm talking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the general image that mm. people have. So they immediately say, why would you want to do that? Because they're thinking you're not going to make money. You're not going to have many possibility. You're not going to be respected. You're not going to be important, all of that. Mm. And that's what we are. We are exactly addressing that. In fact, it's interesting you say that one of my goal is that three years from today, five years from today, when a young woman or a young man goes to mom and dad and says, you know, I know you want me to be a lawyer or an engineer or something, but you know, I have this passion, I want to go into beauty. And that the parent says, wow, it means you're going to make a lot of money, you're going to be important, you're going to have impact. You're going to really matter. You're going to have many possibilities, right? So I would say you need to educate those parents and you need to say this, hello, mama, hello, dada. Let me tell you, there is a new era. I'm talking about becoming the beauty professional of the future. I'm talking about salon of the future. I'm talking about a whole new era in beauty. I'm talking about having a table, a seat at the table of the future. This is a whole new era. That's what I would say. And I would say absolutely uh, get in touch with, with our, uh, our team. Mm -hmm. They will help you in every area you possibly can imagine. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most important thing that we really hug the beautician, the team does, they care about them. They hold their hand through the whole process in every and any area. You are not on your own. You mm -hmm. have a whole community that helps you to become successful. Absolutely, and I love what you said, you're basically trying to, well, your goal is to change the narrative of how the industry is perceived so that when somebody does come and say that they want to pursue this, it's met with encouragement instead of trying to discourage the person from, from Absolutely. doing it. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, I like that a lot. How are you able to partner with the local colleges and universities in order to offer these programs? That wasn't easy either, my friend. <laughs> that was not easy either. Um, that took many, many years of convincing those people, meeting after meeting, educating them about this industry, about this population, about the gap, again and again and again and again. It's been a process. It has not been easy. Yeah. Uh, but thank God, they now fully understand they are on board. I don't know if you know or not, this fall we are launching our degree worldwide starting with nine different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, I especially uh, want to go to remote areas in the world where people don't have access to education at all. Again, especially women. Mm -hmm. uh, I am passionate about reaching out to those that financially have challenges getting into education. Mm -hmm. That's why we've given now nearly over a multi-million dollars so far, a scholarship to everybody to be able to go. And we are planning on extending that even more. Those things matter to me a lot. I don't want any obstacle in a way of a young woman. And for that matter, a young man who says, you know what? I want to build the future in an industry I love. And, and we can say, you know what? You can. We're going to help you. You're going to make it happen. Yes, absolutely. I love the work that you're doing and just advocating for us. We really appreciate you so much. And I can imagine that even though it was hard for those people to come on board, I know that when they look back at it, they're going to they're going to be so happy that they did because it's, it's going to change so many lives and they're going to be able to say that they had a part in, you know, doing that. So kudos okay. to you for, you know, pushing them, advocating, pushing the message like it's going to be it's going to be amazing. 
you are too kind. Kudos to you and what you're doing and the advocacy that you are pursuing and helping people in the industry, educating them, inspiring them. You're doing an amazing job. Keep on doing it. Thank we you. need more individuals like yourself who care about this industry, who care about the people in this industry and who do everything possible to help them. I think that's wonderful. We need Absolutely. more of you. Absolutely. We need more. They're going to come from your, um, from your program. <laughs> they, are. they are for sure. How many students um, were in your first graduating class and how Very are you, first, yeah. how are you celebrating? Oh, we are celebrating big time. Oh my God. I can send you the video of the celebration. Okay. Uh, we started actually with 12 students and during COVID with our mask on mm -hmm. and the whole nine yard. Those 12 students right now are going to graduate next year, early next year at ASU with Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurship uh, Health innovation focus on personal care mm -hmm. uh, so that was the first uh, right now we have around 40 students uh, at asu level uh, we've had during this time now several hundred that have graduated and about to be graduated we have thousands that have applied it's been crazy it's the demand is so high and i love it Mm -hmm. and uh, and my goal is honestly in a few years from now i want hundreds of thousands of beauticians around the world mm -hmm. to have college and university degree and become leaders in this world they deserve it i want it for them absolutely how, what advice would you give to your students that are going through the program and graduating on how to leverage the relationships that they're building in school or just professionally in order to be successful. Because a large part of our industry, it, it really is about the people that you know in certain places to get you in the door. Um, how would they be able to leverage? You know, the very first thing I tell you, uh, our very first graduates, especially this very first group of people that are going through the degree or have already gone through the degree and so on and so on. The very first thing that I have shared with all of them, and actually they've been trained for it, is really to become leaders, yeah. to have an impact wherever they are. Honestly, they, because of their education and because of who they've become, they are like superstars. Everybody wants them. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a group of college and university educated in this field ever before mm -hmm. in this way. So the news is already out there. Like everybody wants to hire them. They can obviously do their own company or they can go for a manufacturer. So my advice to them is to embody the education they have received. And by the way, we put a lot of emphasis on personal growth and leadership during this degree. And mm -hmm. honestly, if you talk to them, their level of confidence, their level of leadership, their letter, level of care for others, right, is impressive. Like, honestly, they just need to show up and do an interview. Everybody wants them. Yeah. Uh, so they are so differentiated in a very clear way with everything else that we've ever had. You know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when people interview with them and they talk, and I can send you the video, uh, we just celebrated uh, several of them that graduated last year with the associate degree. I can send you the video and they are speaking to their degree and everything. And people say, oh my God, they speak so well. <laughs> Where have they been trained, right? Uh -huh. So um, their, their presence and who they have become mm -hmm. is their biggest uh, PR <laughs> out there in the world because they're so special That's just beautiful. where they are. That is so beautiful. I love that. I love that so much. Do you have anything else that's coming up next? You mentioned the graduation next year. You're expanding to different countries. Anything yes. else? Yes. 
uh, around the degree uh, that the graduation next year is a big deal. Um, opening uh, the globe is a big deal. But the other thing that I'm very passionate about that is a big deal is really this is lead is a global revolution, is a global initiative, right? And and it is about it is about in in many ways redefining what beauty is, what beautician is, the power they have, the power industry has. And it's about bringing hope and inspiration to the world in a time we need it the most, right? Mm -hmm. When you say beauty, we better act like one, be like one, and our impact has to be beautiful. So my biggest joy is these leaders are going to go out in the world and they're going to change the world. They're going to change the world. And I can't wait to see that happening. Yes. And that's all a part of your legacy. That's, that's legacy work. Like, what do you want your legacy to be if you ever thought about it? You're too kind. You know, all my life, ever since I was 12 years old, I've always been extremely passionate about women their impact, their education, their happiness. I will be happy if I see more women in leadership position around the world. We need our women. Yes. Badly, badly. Yes. And let's give them the platform to give to our planet Earth and to humanity what we need today more than ever before. Absolutely. This has been such a great conversation. Oh my gosh. I can't let you go yet. I have to ask <laughs> you. <laughs> You're too kind. It's yes, so I have to. To talk to Yeah. I have to ask you the friends and beauty rapid fire questions. Okay? okay. Okay. So whatever comes to your mind first, just spit it out. Okay. Okay. The first one, what are the top three keys to your success so far? My confidence my authenticity, and my passion to serve. How do you measure your success? By my impact on others. Okay. What's the best advice you've ever received or a piece of advice that's just always stuck with you? Uh, that every happiness starts from the inside, internal. is internal. Joy, peace, happiness is internal. It, is, it starts in the inside and then the outside is a reflection of what happens internally. And I strongly believe that. Yes. What advice would you give to a beauty professional right now who is just ready to give up? They are not seeing the results that they want in their business. And they're just like, maybe I should just go get a job. <laughs> oh my God. My advice to beautician is number one, who you are matters and it's very important. My advice to beautician is to dream big and have a vision for yourself. Go out in the world, get the tools, the education, whatever it is that you need and come out the other side, a magnificent leader that the world needs. Do not, do not, absolutely not stop anywhere go for it go to the moon you can and you should and you deserve it yes what is a resource that helps you in your business or any business that you have that you can share with the friends and beauty community my resource in in which way resource you mean um do you have a book that you like do you have a software that you use Oh, oh, yes, yes. I love reading, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend, I believe we can grow without reading. Reading is huge in my world. Mm -hmm. I absolutely advise everyone to read more and to read uh, material and books that can enhance your life, that can put you on a path to success, to happiness, to personal growth. Reading is big. I read a lot. Uh, and uh, we, in, 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 in the LEAD program, we have a uh, book club. Okay. Uh, and we, we, we read, 
Uh, and then we come together and we talk about what we read and what we learn and, and, and things of, of that nature. Um, and I think in today's world, by the way, compassion is something we all need to get better at. Mm. Uh, these days, I tell everybody, you know, read books that can help you to become a more compassionate human. Mm -hmm. We need that. It's very important uh, in our collective humanity. And, and understanding that we are one. I don't care what nationality you're from. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care how you dress, whatever. We are one. Yes. And understanding and embodying that oneness uh, is huge. And I think books can help us a lot uh, with all of that. Nice, okay. So this is the last one. I just want you to fill in the blank and say, my name is, you know, your name. And the key to longevity and success is whatever you think it is, Francis. Yeah. Well, my name is Francis. And the key to longevity is healthy confidence, healthy living intelligent beauty and yes with a ton of love oh i love that this is so awesome before you go can you share where people can connect with you know lead um if you want them to go to the website the social media you can share that information yes we website absolutely please go to the website all of the informations are there, social media as well. We are everywhere uh, and uh, learn about it. Check, check in and see what's going on. At the minimum, you will be inspired, but I hope that you will create a future for yourself, a future you want, you deserve, and you can have. I really hope that for every beauty professional. Absolutely. And I'll leave everything, all the links and stuff down in the show description. But this has been truly a pleasure and an honor to meet you. I absolutely love your energy. Your energy is infectious. Your passion is infectious. I wish you much success. And like just with what you're doing is truly innovative, transformative, life-changing. And I just can't wait to see it grow. You are so kind. I've had the best time talking with you. You are a beautiful ambassador of what I call intelligent beauty, a beauty inside and beauty outside. I learned a lot in our conversation. I'm inspired by it. And honestly, look at you. It's individual like you who have inspired me to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? And uh, so it's been wonderful. Thank you for your kindness and thank you for the time together. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks for listening to the Friends in Beauty podcast. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this episode with at least one friend in beauty and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts so that other friends in beauty can find this show. Plus, we'd love to hear your feedback. Connect with us on all social media platforms at Friends in Beauty, hashtag Friends in Beauty to join the conversation and join our Friends in Beauty Facebook community to stay connected. Talk to you soon.